What's, What's up, C-Squad? Squad? I'm Nigel C. And I'm Daddy C. And we're back with another episode of Dad and Son Kicks and Cooking. If you're new to the channel, this is a spinoff of our main family channel, Lucy. Be sure to check that out. And in today's episode, we're doing an unboxing of a shoe that just came out. Uh, it's something that caught my eyes. The shoe that's been around for a long time, but the colorway that came out was just something I had to get my hands on. Luckily for the folks over at JD Sports, we got a W. Actually, it was a good sneaker day. Got two W's on this Saturday. That we'll is do, very rare. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. And we'll do another video on the other pair. We'll let you know when that, uh, when that rolls out, what that was. But today, we're gonna get into this shoe, and it is the Yeezy. 350 B2 Ash Blue. Bring it in. All right, so the Yeezy 350 Ash Blue. We know we've seen 5,000 colorways of this shoe. Oh, Tip, yeah. talking about colorways, it's actually very funny because, you know, of course, dad's the one who buys all the shoes in this house, right? And somehow, me and mommy seed already have 350s. Actually, I have a box right here. My Yeezy 350 box. Zebras. I, yeah, I have the zebras. This is this is Dad's first. And so. Mom's got the statics. I have the 700s, but my first pair of 350s. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I've never had any of those. I know, considering that he buys all of them. That's how it is with the iPhones too. He has an iPhone 8, and everybody else has an iPhone 11. Ah! Family plan. You the head of the family, and you keep the old phone. That's how it goes for Dad's all day. Anybody else identify with that? You just sacrifice for the family, right? Keep everybody else fresh. All right, let's take a look at this shoe. Yeah. Woo! Wee! Look at that. That is nice. Love that blue colorway. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, that, did that. Yeah. Um, let's go get this meal started. Then we can talk about the shoe once we get back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're right. Today's meal, we stick with the theme of unboxing. We just unboxed some fresh sneakers. So now we're gonna unbox a meal I've never made before. This is something called spatchcock. Now you know what spatchcock is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that okay, is. Okay, he doesn't know what that is. All right, never mind. He's 14. We're not even going to touch that. Spatchcock is a way of cooking chicken, right? So the chicken, I'm unboxing today because it's already partially done. The process is done. But when you look at this chicken, what do you take from it initially? What's one of the defining characteristics of it? I have literally no idea. Oh, okay. Well, obviously, chicken, it's... I don't know, it has lemons on it, it has greens on it, it's white, All right. it has seasoning. The seasoning, that's the thing, right? Nope, not the seasoning. So the, the juice. Nope, not the juice. It's the, not cooked. The spatchcock characteristic is that it's butterfly. So basically you well, take it- Was I supposed to actually know what that is? Look at it, man, this is flat. You ever see a chicken coming flat from the grocer like this? I don't know, I just eat it. You see chickens walking around flat. <laughs> butterfly, first of all, I've never heard the word butterfly chicken in my life. It's butterfly, right? It's a way of like preparing and carving some type of meat. So when you butterfly the chicken, you're removing the spine, you're cutting it kind of open, and you're breaking that breastplate, so then it becomes like a butterfly, right? And what that does, it helps the chicken cook faster and more even. So traditional spatchcock is also brine. So what the brining is, is putting a solution of water and salt and some seasonings. And what that does is that like- It lets it like soak in, right? Yeah, it soaks in. It's like marinating the chicken. So it right. doesn't, you know, when you cook it, it's nice and juicy afterwards. Um, but tonight, we're gonna do this already pretty much half prepared spatchcock. This is a lemon rosemary seasoned up. Bought this at the grocery store. Cause it's just a traditional weeknight meal, right? We want the easy and approachable meals. Right. You can throw something together really good. We have some leftover potatoes from the previous Previous meal. I'm gonna throw those in with a little onion. That'll be like a little, you know, just a little garnish. Garnish with that. For me, Nigel doesn't like potatoes. I know. So I'm also gonna make some rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. That Remember I love. those commercials? Yeah, I know. We know. You guys love rice aroni. <laughs> but this is a classic. And who can't make a box of rice aroni, right? What about San Francisco? The commercials back in the 70s, back in the 70s, 80s was always on TV. Rice it said, Rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. I don't see those commercials anymore. Yeah, because it's not the 70s, 80s. <laughs> and I guess they branched out of San Francisco. All right, so that's the main part of the meal. Some roasted asparagus to add some greens to it. Let's get to it. You ready? Yes, I see this cutting board and knife. 
And judging by our previous videos, I guess I'll be cutting something. What is it? Green onions again? No green onions today. What a shocker! But we do have yellow onion. Not a shocker. <laughs> that. And also, just uh, cut these tomatoes in half. Those are potatoes. Yep, potatoes, not <laughs> <Yes>. tomatoes. <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead. I don't even. I don't have any tomatoes at all in this dish. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Hey, stop, don't judge me. All right, so fast cock, I'll get this out. We'll get that in the oven. A little olive oil here, some aluminum foil. Nice and easy, check this out. It's already prepared, man. I just need to cut open the pack and lay it out. You know what you do with that onion, right? Of course, I've done this a million times. He's a professional onion cutter now. He's had many hours of training now. Yes. So we've been doing this in the kitchen. This chicken is laid out. Now you can take some of those onions and sprinkle right around the chicken. All right. There's a little extra salt just for seasoning on top. Around, not on top of it. Oh. On the pan. Oh, man, I am missing pan. Can I eat lemon, please? No, this is four right now. But. but I like them. <laughs> yeah, I got you. But you gonna like even better when the chicken comes on lemon flavor, right? Like lemony? Maybe, maybe. We do have some in the fridge, so I could just eat one of those, actually. Here, you can have the rest of that. Oh, thank you. This kid loves lemons. I mean, like, he's been eating them all his life, ever since he was born. Love sour flavored things, sour patch kids. This is jam. And I'm like, ooh, this is sour. Nigel loves it, always. Damn, you can stop it at a second. <laughs> hey. That's pretty, isn't it? That is beautiful. Yeah, let's get this in the oven so we can get this in our bellies. All right, chicken's in the oven. Now we just gotta hook up this roni and get back to the shoes. And you know what, Nigel? The roni's so simple, man. I think you could just handle it by yourself. I'm gonna go take a break. Huh? And do me a favor, cut up that asparagus while you're at it. What? Seed squad. Today I'm going to be making some rice roni. The first step in this cooking is to take two and a half tablespoons of butter or margarine. The next thing you want to do is take two and one quarter cups of water. Now, the water is not yet needed. I'll be taking my butter and this rice roni mix and putting it into this pan. Come with me, seed squad. In this pan, we'll be putting in our two and a half tablespoons of butter. Just pop it right in there. You hear that sound? Very nice along with your rice. Now this, I guess, is seasoning. So we'll be taking our rice and dumping all of it right in there. And then we're gonna saute over medium heat. So I think that means take a spatula and just move these around together so that they mix, see? We're just gonna saute this over medium heat until when? Until the pasta's golden brown while stirring frequently, like I said. So take this and simply stir it around. Let the butter melt, let your pasta turn golden brown. Make sure you mix it equally throughout all of the pasta. After we've sauteed this a little bit, we're gonna take a water cup and put in two and one quarter cups of water. Let's go over to our sink. Until it's right about there. Ah, I did too much. Now let's pour out some. Ah, right on the dot. Now that our rice is golden brown, we can slowly stir in our water. Oh! Oops. Now, slowly stir it in. So just pour it all in while stirring it all around, okay? Sorry there, I almost lost my cool. Now what we're gonna do is cover and reduce heat. Oh, we have to also stir in our special seasonings. Let's stir this right in. Mix it around with the spatula a little bit. Ah, I almost lost it there. Now, you can also use the back side of your spatula to press out these seasoning chunks. Tips from Nigel. Oh my eyes! Ooh. Oh, well, I almost lost my cool again there. Very sorry for that. I meant, ah, uh, what pain my eyes are doing right now. Now that we've got this all mixed in, set our spatula 
Cover and reduce heat to low. Simmer 15 to 20 minutes or until rice is tender. Let's stand five minutes before serving. Now, I will rejoin Dad to discuss sneakers. Thanks for coming. Ah, silly me. I forgot I have to cut this asparagus. Let me do that. Now, my good friend, I've actually become a master cutter over my days in this YouTube channel. So now you'll see me with the full power of my cutting. Hey, do I cut this in little bits? Or... Dad, how do you cut this asparagus? Dads can't get a break. Woo, look at that prom knit, man. Mm -hmm. That prom knit in blue. It is prime. <laughs> With the yellow stripe down the side. Mm -hmm. This is a color, I feel like, really like 5,350s. But they did some different things on this one. Mm. They changed up the stitching down the middle. It used to be that like double over top stitching. This is now like a seam. We can compare. Yeah, we Let's can do compare. That. Here's what we're going to do. Here, I'll bring mine in. And don't judge me, Seed Squad. Um, I've worn mine a bunch of times, so they're kind of dirty, you know. The white isn't as white as it would normally be. This is true. But let's see. Let's see. All right, so looking at the side by side with the new 350 V2 Ash Blue versus this 350 V2 Zebra, right? It's different. They had the old uh, tab on the back. But the biggest difference I pointed out was looking at was the stitching down the middle and the back. Right now, in this version, it's actually a seam that's kind of flat stitched together versus this over the top stitch that has always been in the 350 V2. True. Right? Yeah. I mean, everything else from that point is really the same, but again, a totally different colorway than we've seen before. I know the statics and things like that from earlier in this iteration. That's what you said mom has, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had like a transparent seam down the side, that stripe that you kind of see through. And then they've kind of changed them up and now you can't see through it. Just that different color stripe down the middle with this yellow that I really like. Uh, everything else is straightforward. Also, yeah. these, these say Fly 350 on it, but backwards. And now, even though these are also 350s, it doesn't say Sply 350 on this stripe. <laughs> and I also noticed on the stripe that the stripe on here is a lot thicker than the stripe on here. You see Which how stripe? the zebra stripe goes um oh yeah like yeah, from yeah. here to here, like here to the bottom. But this one doesn't. I noticed that as well. All right, <laughs> here the bottom is the same. And yes, like I said, I've worn the zebras a bunch of times. So you know they're dirty now. But my shoes don't look like that. Yes. Cause you wear like <laughs> one shoe a million times and then you have, he has shoes from like 20 years ago that he's worn once. 10 years, well, no, not 20 years ago that I worn once. Just shoes that I've taken care of. They look like they've been worn once. Yeah, <laughs> takes care of the shoes. Good job, Daddy Steve. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, so we pointed out some differences in the 350 versions. Um, Nigel, good job pulling that out so we can do side by side. Thank you. But let's get back into the Ash Blue. Yeah. Right? So I really like the direction that Yeezy is going in with the 350 V2. You know, apparently there's supposed to be more ash colorways. I know there's an ash stone that's coming out. Um, just some different colors other than some of these ones. Again, it's like light brown, light gray, you know, light green. Just all these earth tones that just always feel like that, you know, in that same family. This is the first time I've seen something with a blue hue to it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, with a nice pair of sweats, blue sweats, dark blue, navy blue jeans, you know, these will, these will rock man i think they're good what do you guys think about them tell us down in the comments are you a fan out of the 350 v2 ash blue nigel what about you man what's your thoughts oh i actually love these shoes a lot and i just thought of something really awesome look at this okay so you see this blue tone right what does it remind you of water okay now tell me where water is beaches now tell me what's also on beaches sand yeah. and tell me what color sand is literally the color of this stripe oh. okay so this is not even the yeezy D350 V2 Ash Blue. <laughs> it's the Yeezy 350 V2 Beach. Ooh. Bow! This is literally just the beach. The beach colorway. Ooh, and you could wear these to the. I don't know if you would want to do that because you get sand and all this. Not in the there. sand, but you know, in the on the boardwalk. On a boardwalk, right? You could yeah. wear these to a boardwalk and it would go purple. I like that. Thank you, thank you. And I also had something else to say. Now I have to bring these back in real quick no. just to tell you guys that I have a bigger shoe than Dad. Because because these are size 12, and these are size 11. I decided to let you guys know that <laughs> for no reason, absolutely at all. Whatever, remember it's in my jeans that you're getting these 12 size feet. Mm, I don't know if that sounds good. <laughs> say, say, um.
All that means to me is as I continue to buy nice shoes, I don't have to worry about you trying to wear them. All right, Dad, if you want to wear them so bad, let's see how they look on your feet. <laughs> okay, let's do this on foot, and then we're going to finish up this meal. But first, if you want to see Daddy C buy some shoes in my size, I please hope you do. Then subscribe right now. Yeah, please subscribe, and then we'll see about that. out the oven, looking good. Let's plate it up. What do you guys think of this super simple meal? The chicken I bought, half prepared from the store. Rice aroni, super simple out of the box. Asparagus roast stem was like salt, pepper, and olive oil. That's it, three ingredients. Super simple. Tell me in the comments down below what you think about this meal. And I think, Nigel, it looks all good, man. Let's go feed the lady. Yeah.